Well, they're not talking about the pill that, that we've been getting in junk mail, you know. Improve your nightlife and that kind of thing. <laughs> make, your, uh, make your honey happy tonight. Or <laughs> okay, so question A, write a chemical equation that represents this reaction, the uncoiling DNA, then write the rate law for this reaction. So how did you do that? Okay, now note again that this reaction represents the uncoiling of DNA. So an easy way to represent this reaction would be to do it this way. Okay, so we could do it like this. We have DNA coil. This is the coiled state, and then it's going to yeah DNA uncoil. So this is an easy way to represent this reaction. Now it says here. Let's see. So it says the uncoiling is the first order process with an activation energy of 430 kilojoules per mole. So based on that first sentence, does that tell us anything? And what information does that first sentence give us? Okay, so when you see first order, how can we use this part here? Yeah, so because we want to write the rate law for this reaction. So for a rate law, the rate is equal to K times what? Concentration. Yeah, the concentration of? Yeah, coiled DNA. And what's going to be the exponent? And one. Okay, so this represents the rate law for this reaction. Now, we're also told here that the activation energy is 430 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we can put this in here too. So our EA is 430 kilojoules per mole. Now, based on this number, is this a big energy or a small energy? What do you think? Yeah, this, is big, this is a big activation energy. And then it says at 60 degrees, so at the temperature of 60 degrees, the half life is two minutes. Now, this is the first order reaction. So, based on this information here, can we calculate some another quantity? Can we find K? Yeah, we find K. So, for a half, for a first order reaction, how is the half life related to the rate constant K? So that's equal to point. 6.9 divided by K. Okay, so we can actually calculate K based on the half life. So let's do that. So K is equal to, let's see, 0. 0.69 divided by 2. And that's equal to, to uh, 0. 0.345. And this will be in minutes to the minus 1. Okay, so again, at 60 degrees, this will give you our rate constant K. <coughs> okay, now it says, calculate the half-life at normal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So, we know what the half-life at 60 degrees is, so we can calculate the rate constant K. So this is the rate constant K at 60 degrees. 
multiplied out by 2. How does K change with temperature? So what equation will we use to figure out how the rate constant K changes with temperature? Yeah, so we can use this equation. K is equal to A times E to the minus EA over RT. Now, the textbook shows an equation which relates two different temperatures and two different rate constants. And that's the section, that's the section 14.4. And if we take a look on page, let's see. We take a look on page 488, equation 14.13 shows an equation which relates two rate constants to two temperatures. So let me write this on the chalkboard. shows that the natural log of K1 over K2 is equal to Ea over R times uh, let's see, T1 minus T2 over T1 times T2. Okay, so we're given the rate constant K at a certain temperature. Okay, so in other words, we, know what, we can know what K1 and T1 are. We want to find the half-life at 37 degrees. So in this equation, that would represent a T2. Do we know what EA is? Yeah. yeah. And we can look up R, that's the gas constant. So the only thing we need to do is solve for K2. Okay, so let's do that. So in our equation, if K1 is, let's see, that was uh, 0.345. And that, this is at T1 of 60 degrees. And for K2, we don't know what that is. And T2 is at 37 degrees. EA is 430 kilojoules per mole. Does that have to be converted? Yeah, yeah we have to convert this to joules, so make this 430,000 joules per mole. And for the gas constant R, we'll use this one, 8.31 joules per mole per degree Kelvin. We also have to convert those temperatures. So we have to convert from degrees Celsius to degrees Kelvin. So 60 degrees Celsius is equal to 300 and, um, 333. 333 degrees Kelvin. And 37 degrees Celsius is equal to 310 degrees Kelvin. OK, so you set up your equation and I'm not sure if your math teacher said, now you just plug, plug and chuck. So if you can get to this point, you know, in Chem 1B, if you get to this point here, plug in all those numbers, that's like 80% of, that's 80% credit. The last 20% just doing math.
Okay, so when you do this calculation, should K2 be larger or smaller than K1? It should be smaller. But note that at a lower temperature, K2 should be smaller than K1. Okay, so we got to get an answer for K2. Yeah. 